game developers, it is me, Titan Hex. I am back again. Tell a friend. <laughs> so we are going to be doing this tutorial on the picture-based menu. Uh, we're going to sort of be using some sort of skill tree or something along those lines. There are, of course, different ways to do this. This is the most basic way to do it. There are very few um, functions. There's very few sort of things. It, it's a base, basically. It's a base. It's a good starting point. And from editing the events that we've created, we can create a more complex, more rigorous, more rules-driven system, which is what we want. But before we can do that, we need to start with some sort of base. And that's why we're here doing this now. I've already taken the liberties to do this. Um, before we jump into the meat, the heart, and the commands uh, that run this whole eventing operation, we're going to go ahead and take a quick look at the event itself. So let's go ahead and start by opening up a playtest. We're going to go ahead and see what the event looks like. So let's talk a little bit about the functionality. Now, I do have to warn you that the second episode, I'm going to be splitting this up. The second episode will be going over making it. The first episode will be going over looking at it and then seeing how it functions. So we'll begin by talking to this guy. This opens up a nice little skill tree. Uh, we can use this tree to sort of uh, create, uh, so we, we could easily replace all of these little pictures with different icons that would allow us to sort of choose between different uh, parts of the tree. We can create lines that join together, tile, uh, tiles sort of, or lines or whatever we need to join together each and every piece of this skill tree. Uh, right now, it's just a very simple, very basic menu. We could even use this simple, basic menu as a bestiary for or menu of some sort right now, as it is. So there's a lot of options we can do, and that's really what we want with it. The first thing is that if I hit left and up, it shouldn't go off the screen, and it doesn't. Uh, the selector stays within the bounds that I've set. Um, and it knows what position it's at. It knows that this is position. It's well, it pretty much knows it's in the bottom right using uh, some variables that I've set up for it. Uh, pretty much one variable. So this is one, two, three, and four. Then we go and it jumps up 10 when we go to the right. And this is 11, 12, 13, 14. And then this is. 21, 22, 23, and 24. So it knows that much. Um, and every time we hit a button, it either, this is uh, increasing by 10, and this is decreasing by 10, this is going down by one, and this is going up by one. So it's a very simple number-based system that allows us to sort of create a menu. Uh, there are some problems with a little bit of the functionality that's easy enough to fix uh, using some sort of small scripting or things like that. I'm not going to go too much into that, but I don't mind jumping into it a little bit and sort of taking a look. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, there's two different ways. If I hit escape, uh, it'll take me out of this little menu. And if I hit enter, it will open up the menu. Uh, well, I'm sorry. If I hit escape, it exits the, this skill tree menu or whatever you want it to be. If I hit enter, it'll figure out what the selector number is, which tells it sort of where it is, and then it does something according to that value. So if I was to hit enter on this, um, I would, I believe I've set it up to either increase the stats, uh, 28, 26, let's see, 866622. So what happens if I do it again? See, uh, attack goes up. And then if I do this, so this would increase a different stat. Uh, one of them gives you a new skill. The other one I gives you a physical skill. Well, the other one gives you a magic skill. So very small things that I've done here to create a nice little tree when I talk to this guy. Um, we're going to go ahead and now in the game and we'll take a look at what this, like the, the actual code here. So this code is very easy. Uh, goes right to the common event. So we use the call common event. Um, right here uh, in flow control we choose the event I've 
designated selector tutorial as the event to pull up and it does that um, so everything is good it's very simple so now we know it's all in the common event and we use this using common event so that we can either you make this happen make this uh, skill tree show up either after you've leveled up or after you've beaten an enemy or after you've uh, just different things just different different ways to do it um, so as long as you can call a common event you can make this skill tree or menu pop up um, or even just a button press you can use a detection of a button press to make it show up there's there's tons of ways so we're going to go ahead and open up the database we're going to go to the common events we're already here and right here three i've set up some uh some of the common event functions it's fairly long which is why we're going over it first and then uh, we're going to start making it in the next video um, talk about a little bit about what we can do and what it can't do and what you might need to do to get it working um, And then in the next video, we're gonna go much more in depth as we create this menu from scratch So To begin uh, I, I've commented part of this the first thing you need to do is set the value of your variables You, you want to make the variable uh, you want to create three different variables Maybe even more depending on what you're going to do um, to make this work so the first thing we want to do is set the position of the selector if you leave the you have to create while well, you you designate uh, your selector I uh, designated variable 2 to be the selector I uh, named it so this is going to store the variables um, the Variable uh, this is the initial number that it starts at uh, I'm starting it at 11 because it starts in the 11 position um, and I know That the 11 position begins right about at uh, this position. So I've created this position to be the first part for um, th This is pretty much where I know the 11 pick the first picture where 11 is uh, begins uh, at position 240 and 96 so I've, I've set the picture uh, sort of coordinates there. I need to do that because I need to know where the um, what position on the screen the selector needs to be. And I do I set the X and the Y that way. Uh, I do 11 the selector because I need to know what I need to designate a number that shows me what um, what like what the selector is. I need to be able to keep track of the number that the selector is on in a very simple precise manageable way and that's why I have created this variable whereas this one just keeps track of the position of the selector this one keeps track of the value of the selector um, this is a simple way to do it uh, instead of having to use two numbers we use one number um, I very well <laughs> I mean, I could pretty much divide these two and then make that the select number, but then that's harder to keep track of. Um, it just needs to be something simple like this. So now, uh, after I've set the positions up, the, the values that I need, um, and by the way, oh, no, no, we'll go over that later. So by the way, uh, display pictures, this is where I start setting up the picture, the position of each picture that is the skill tree. Uh, the picture is just a visual representation of um what the system is so i need the player to be able to visualize what's happening and i use the pictures here to help them visualize the what they're picking um if it was just numbers it would and uh if it was just numbers it would still work it's just the player wouldn't have a very good visual of what they're doing so we're creating a visual here by creating those pictures and then whenever the player hits buttons the pictures change and update and move around so that the player knows what they're picking and what the uh selection they're on is so the uh first set of pictures here are the well this uh let's see where is it where is it this down here is the um, the selector. Uh, I want that to be a very high number because I want it to always be on top. Lower numbers are always on the bottom. Higher numbers are always on the top. I need the selector to be on top of all the pictures because it just looks weird if it's sliding underneath all the pictures. So I want the selector to be on top. So I always put that as the higher number. And then I go ahead and set them up. Upper left uh, is the coordinate. 
Um, so I set them up in the upper left. Uh, I, I just designate where they're going, and then I just sort of space them out. So this one starts going um, from the top to the bottom. 96, jumps up, jumps up, jumps up, jumps up. Uh, then this increases, jumps up, jumps up, jumps up, increases. So we're just increasing numbers here to put them in the right uh, spacing. So they're certain spacing apart, and we just sort of designate it like that. Uh, very simple, very easy, nothing complex. We're just putting them where they need to be, and it's simple math just to put them where they need to be. And uh, you should be able to figure this one out pretty easy on your own, and if you can't, just play around with it. You'll, you'll put it where you want, and eventually it'll all make sense. Uh, so we put a wait after this to prevent processing of buttons. So if I hit enter on that guy and I don't have a wait, it's going to think that I hit enter right away and it's just going to pick whatever I, I'm on. It's going to pick the 11th spot because I, I was holding enter the second this showed up. Because this shows up nearly almost immediately. One frame after I hit enter, this starts processing if I do not put a wait. And then it's detecting, trying to figure out, find out button presses. And it'll find out right away that I'm hitting enter unless I barely tap enter, just pow. Uh, so you need to put a wait so that it stops looking for button input. Um, and that's kind of important for this. So I throw a wait in here. Um, I never want it inside of the loop because if you have a high weight, it's going in or a high weight number in that inside of a loop. Um, then like in the main part of the loop, then it's going to have a long delay between button input detection so we always want it outside of the loop um, so next we start processing the loop so we're basically creating a loop here and we're detecting different button presses so we're detecting the left right up down enter and escape and this is the left button detection uh, we're now detecting in a simple conditional branch if the left button is being pressed and then we are changing the values based on uh, where what we want to have happen. So we know when we press left, we want the selector to go down by 10. Whereas if we press right, it goes up by 10. If we press down, it goes d up by one. And if we press up, it goes down by one. Um, that's just how we have it set up. You can set it yours up however you want to. So now we um, are changing the selector position. So if we start on 11 and we hit left, it goes down 10, which means we're now on one. Um, we also want to update where the X position is. Uh, the X position, if we're going left, always will go down. Whereas if we're going right, it increases. Up, we decrease. And down, we increase. Uh, I'll have to double check that, but uh, sounds about right. So we're changing the X position of the selector. Um, so it's going to the left, about 136 pixels. And we want to make sure we're not going below one. So we're going to check if the value has fallen out of bounds. So the only way uh, it would fall out of bounds after going left is if it goes left to the point where it's going below one. So now we check, hey, is it below one? Uh, that's a problem. We're going to increase it. We're going to reverse what we just did by increasing the selector value by 10 and the selector X by 136. Uh, in programming, you want more absolutes than you do something like this. So it would make more sense to do equals one. Um, so we're going to just correct this real quick so selector is one if we press left too much so this sort of keeps it from uh, having errors uh, unintentional consequences um, this uh, we can set how we want I'm going to leave this the way it is just because it's going to um, It'll be less of a headache if we, we leave this the way it is. So I'm going to leave this the way it is. Uh, this is just good programming uh, to instead of reversing what we do to, you know, uh, set it to the correct value that we want it so that it's more definite, uh, more defined. So let's see, move the selector where it belongs according to the changes uh, to changes in the values. Uh, so that means that we're going to move the picture. So whereas we were setting, uh, creating a picture, uh, now we are moving the picture. So we're updating the selector's position. We want the pic selector to be moved uh, to a, an appropriate value. So now we are sliding the selector to the left and then we're giving a five. Uh, so, so here we checked wait for completion. So we're waiting 10 seconds. It's like a 10 second wait on top. And then we're waiting an extra five seconds after it's moved just to, to prevent input immediately after it, it creates a weird sliding effect. It, it, it gets really annoying. Um, you, you want to get this little bit of extra buffer here. 
So we already have the 10 second buffer because we checked wait for completion and then we have the five second buffer also. Um, this uh, right here, we are designating the position using variables um, is the best way to keep track of it. This works very well, so that's what we're doing. Next, we go down to the right button. It is just the opposite of the left button. Nothing really crazy or complex here. We're, we're increasing numbers instead of decreasing them. Um, I'm going to leave this to, I'm going to set this to, if it is above, no. I'm going to set this to where it should be, uh, minus one. Um, actually, no, I shouldn't do that equals one. I, it is actually, sorry, I messed this up. I did want plus 10 because if I'm on four, I want it to go uh, and it goes to negative four, I want it to go back up to positive four. So yeah, this is this is correct. Uh, I just realized that. Anyways, um, we, hey, it's good uh, for you guys to learn that too. So right button, uh, if it goes above 29, we want it to be re reversed and go back down 10 after it's gone up 10. So we're, hey, that, that's incorrect. You, you're out of the bounds, let's go back. Um, so you set up the boundaries using an if uh, conditional branch uh, using the check for check on a variable um, so we're, we're checking if the variable is above 29 we're saying hey it shouldn't be boom fixed uh, and then we update the picture position again using all the stuff that we just did up very similar we're going um, when we, we go up uh, we go down one uh, so we're subtracting one every time we go up the number is going down um, it's a little confusing, uh, but in terms of numbers, it just makes more sense this way. Uh, the Y value starts to increase, um, so that, it's very simple here. Uh, and we want to make sure that if the value falls below the set one value, that means, uh, so if, if it hits one of the zero positions, so if it hits 20, we know, you know, you've gone down too far. We need to correct that because uh, you shouldn't be at 20. There's 11, 1 and 21 so once we hit 20 we know we, we're, we're like going the wrong way so if we're going from 20 to or 21 to 20 uh you know something's wrong um we don't want to be in 20 so we're going to go ahead and correct that uh, same with 10 and zero so there is nothing above those positions relative to where they are so there is no 20 there is no um, 10 there is no zero those are all positions where we correct it if we're going into that territory so this corrects that when we hit the up button uh, and then it updates the value it should be so this is just a, a nice little correction it says hey you've hit a number you shouldn't be in let's fix that um, and these are sort of like gateways 0 10 and 20 are gateways that say hey you're trying to step through this gateway uh, you shouldn't be here uh, numbers one through nine is de designated for the left side numbers um 11 through 19 is designated for the middle and 21 through 29 is designated for the right you shouldn't be in these positions so these are gateways you're stopped um, we can of course increase this this is not set uh, in stone you can go uh, 0 20 and then 40 if you want a very large set of 20 sort of choices so of course making a game that complex i always say steer away from that but to each your own and there's always ways to make it so that this process is that finitely or well uh, or just you know you can increase the amount of screen space you're using uh, there's a there's different ways so uh, if the down button is pressed um, we do the opposite we're checking now instead of which we're, ch we're checking the gateways we're checking if it's inside of a bound it shouldn't be in so now we're saying, hey, if you're between 24 and 29, there's nothing between those numbers. You shouldn't be here. We're going to go ahead and correct you by uh, moving the number back to where it should be. Um, so 24 through 29, there's nothing in those spaces. 14 through 19 and 4 through 9, there's nothing in those spaces. Now, if you wanted to, say, put a, um, uh, let's see, if you want to put some numbers in between some spaces again, uh, if you had, like, different, like, on the left side, you have 4, you right side you have four and then the middle you have six uh, you might want to change the range that you're using um, so this is just checking to see if you're inside of a range you shouldn't be and it corrects that using three different uh, s sets of ranges uh, four through nine 14 or well it's it's five through nine 
15 through 19 and 25 through 29. Uh, so it's checking if they're inside the ranges using a if and if and if and if and if and if. Uh, uh, go over the, the conditional branches if, if this is in any way confusing. So next we move the selector where it belongs according to the changes to the values. Uh, that's a pretty easy one. So you already know how that works. And then we are now checking uh, the enter button. Uh, the enter button is the uh, way to change. Uh, no, when you hit enter, you're confirming a selection. So when you hit uh, enter, you're saying, hey, this is what I wanted. Uh, go ahead and do the process inside of that. Uh, I have made it so if you are on one, which was up there in the top left, one, two, three, four, then 11, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I, if you're in one, uh, the attack increases by two. If you're in two, defense, uh, if you're in selector position three, four, and then we check 11. So now we add fire, spark, dual attack, triple attack to uh, this player's skill tree. Um, and then cancel is pressed down. So th this, this is a really easy process. I didn't set them all up. I didn't feel like it was necessary. So basically I have two uh, that do nothing over on the middle and right, um, but no big deal. Uh, this is just a test. So you set in the what you want to have happen on each different value um, selector position, basically. So if you hit enter and you're on selector position all the way to the right and down one, uh, you give Harold a triple attack. And of course, we can always check, uh, does player have the triple attack skill? Then brum, brum, you can't pick this. Uh, you already have triple attack can always show up. And that's very simple to do. Um, so now if cancel is pressed down, break loop, that is the cancel one. Uh, we would break the loop, which means we would leave this whole looping thing. Uh, we always want to break loop at the end of a confirm or a cancel so that we can exit. Unless, of course, you want them to stay, um, in which case you would not break the loop inside of the uh, confirm or enter. So you can either remove this or leave it in, depending on how you want it to work. You just might make sure that you have some sort of... Um, some sort of visual or odd or audio or 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 uh you know cue as to you have chosen this if you're not going to cancel so bam breaks loop uh, either way you do want some sort of arl or visual cue uh, then we break the loop um so cancel breaks the loop and right now we have the selection confirm breaks the loop and then we get rid of all the pictures that they outside of the loop at the very end of the loop uh, after it's been broken we want to clear all the pictures and then create a nice little delay so that the player can't press anything and then end up right back into where they were um so we don't want them hitting enter and then oh we're back <laughs> we're back into the screen we we're just in because we're still holding enter uh we want to make sure we create that nice input um buffer where they're there it's not checking um and we're gonna go ahead and in the next video go over scripting a uh, button input check that uh, because is down is so inconvenient. I really honestly, I wish uh, one of the developers would say, hey, instead of is pressed down, why don't we make a drop down that chooses between the three of uh, pressed once, is being pressed, or um, I think there was one more that is uh, sort of a speed checker um, where it checks and then after a delay continues to check. Uh, those are, I wish there was a drop down box for that because it makes sense and I don't know why they don't do that. Um, so next is the, uh, we'll go over fixing that using the script portion right here. Uh, for now, we won't worry about it. Um, but yeah, we clean up all the pictures by getting rid of them and then we exit. Um, boom, easy stuff. So that's pretty much how to do something like this. Um, sorry, the video's gone a little long. Um, this is not a short or easy or small process. So that's why we're breaking it up into two. Hope you guys learned something. Uh, thank you as always. Please like, subscribe, uh, help me create more of these videos. Uh, right now, uh, I, I am in the midst of creating a Patreon. Uh, at some point, it'll be up. Um, at this point, uh, maybe the video, uh, if you're watching the video at the point you are now, it, it's already going. Um, right now, I'm just trying to make sure that uh, I can continue to do these, that I, I'm incentivized for them, and that I'm you know, putting in all the time that it takes uh, to make these videos for you guys. Um, so thank you uh, for supporting me, uh, helping me out. Um, the Patreon has some cool little things for you guys. Um, I am going to try creating resources and uh, events and tutorials and helps 
help stuff in there for people to pick up and uh, you know watch. Um, most of my the meat and the bulk is always going to be on YouTube to, to show you guys what what you can be capable of, and then the extra little incentive to do more and to have more aids and more tools is of course in the Patreon. So it's going to kind of it. Uh, thanks again, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.